Most cricketers agree that the nearest to the perfect batsman that Indian cricket has produced is Vijay Merchant. We often hear, Vijay Bhai, of the merchant school of batting. Can you tell us something about it? I've heard about it myself, but never had the privilege of reading it in print. It's quite a compliment. Well, if you ask me, the merchant... One should remember that uh, as long as there, you are there at the wickets, the runs will come. This school of batting uh, might be termed as merchant school of batting. Who would you say belong to this school of batting? Yes, two come to mind very readily, my contemporaries. One is Vijay Hazare, a man who concentrated more on his batting than any other Indian cricketer I know. And the second, incidentally, a third Vijay, Vijay Manjrekar, who also believed in remaining at the wickets as long as possible so that he would be able to big, build up a big total. Which of your matches, Vijay Bhai, do you remember best? From a personal point of view, two. One was the second test match at Manchester in 1936. When, being 380 runs behind on the first innings against England, and with only 135 minutes for play on the second afternoon, Mushtaq Ali and I went in to play for a draw, because a victory was out of question considering those were only three day test matches. And in 135 minutes, Mushtaq and I registered a total of 190 runs for no wicket. Mushtaq was the architect of our innings, having made 106 not out at the end of the day, and I, a slow scorer, made 79. That was one match. The second one was against Leicestershire, the same year. And in that match, in the first innings, I was not out with a score of 135 out of a total of about 270. And in the second innings, again opening the innings, when the last man got out, I was not out with 77. So I joined the select band of cricketers in first class cricket of a batsman opening the innings and remaining unbeaten in both the innings which were completed once. These two matches naturally I remember as the most precious in my career. For all the seriousness of test cricket, do you recollect the lighter side of the game? A lot of it. Two instances readily come to mind. At Lord's 1930, England versus Australia. Something went wrong with the introduction to the king and an unscheduled break was taken in order that the teams could be introduced. Immediately afterwards, an Australian wicket fell. The English people did not like it. And next morning, there was a seven-column banner headline saying, the king takes a wicket. Later on, the Australians batted in spite of that magnificently. And so, a spectator called out, now bring in the queen. Can you give us some idea of the development of our attitude to test cricket? Test cricket for India started in 1932 at Lords under the captaincy of the late Colonel C.K. Naidu. In those days, we always played for a win. It didn't matter if we lost ultimately, but the game was played at a very great pace. Later on, with the advent of Vijay Hazare and me, the game became more scientific and as a result, more sedate and a little dull for the spectators. The idea was first to make sure that we were not defeated before we started for a victory and sometimes that was too late. In recent years, again we have gone back to the days of Colonel Naidu, when Men Farooq Engineer and Ajit Wadekar make many strokes, sometimes too many. But fortunately, in the present series against Australia, we have come back a little into our own past tradition, in the presence of Ashok Mankad and young Vishwanath at the crease. And both these cricketers are playing in a manner which makes me feel that with a little spirit of adventure of Wadekar and engineer and a little cautious approach by Ashok Mankad 
and young Vishwanath, we would be able to do as well in our cricket as at any other time. And I'm sure that we would be able to place India on the international map of cricket in keeping with our tradition and our culture. What do you think of the future of our current crop of batsmen? Actually, that was the second point of difference I had in mind. At present, if you score a run a minute, it is something out of this world. But in my time, I have already mentioned to you about Mushtaq and I making 190 runs in 135 minutes, playing for a draw. Don Bradman in 1930 in a test match on the very first day made 309 not out individually out of a total of 458 for three wickets. But why go to Don Bradman? Take our own late Colonel C.K. Naidu, the greatest cricketer this country has produced. In 1926, playing at the Bombay Gymkhana ground, he made 153 runs in 110 minutes, and his score was inclusive of 11 sixers and 15 boundaries. When do you think a cricketer should retire? A cricketer should retire when he's still good enough to play for his team and his country. In other words, when people will ask why, not when they start asking why not. If he retires at that stage of his career, he has an extremely happy memory of his association with the game. His supporters knew him when he was at his best and not when he was on the decline. And finally, he gives a chance to the younger generation of cricketers to come up at a time when he's just giving up first class cricket. Vijay Bhai, if you were given all your years again, what would you do? I would play cricket again and with as straight a bat as possible. The game has done so much for me that I can never repay its debt in a lifetime. The game has given me a name, but for cricket I would have been a Vijay Thakarsi, not Vijay Merchant. It has given me a little fame. It has given me an outdoor and healthy outlook on life. It has given me opportunity to travel and see a part of the world. It has taught me how to take success and also how to take defeat. It has taught me not to underestimate my opponent at any time. In other words, cricket has not been merely a game with me. It has been a way of life, a way of life which I would not exchange for any other in the world. <laughs>